if I'm a student wanting to audition for Berkeley or any other college, what do I have to do to prepare for that? Okay, so Berkeley, uh, you, you can audition to so many different things, right? You can audition. Let's go from the simplest auditions to the more complex ones. So the simplest, the simplest one is for the, fi- for the five-week program, right? We have a program every summer, which is probably the largest uh, music camp in the world. We have, uh, we're actually in the middle of one right now. That's why I told you I'm exhausted. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> So I just got home, and uh, we 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 have about right now just drum sets. We have about 125 drummers, only five week. Uh, we are about to start week four, and just to give you an idea, last two Saturdays I go I audition 80 drummers for a showcase, wow. and last Saturday I audition 16 drummers for the finalists. Uh, so that audition is for a scholarship audition. And what they do, they submit three videos. There is a, a software that they can download three performances and an essay. So that is pretty much open uh, to their choice. I recommend if they ever wanted to be accepted to the five week, especially if they want to win a scholarship, for the performances to be live, footage of live performance, not a studio thing and not tracks. And then, and then I recommend you have different ones. Like, uh, you know, a little bit different songs. If you're a rock guy, play rock. If you're a jazz guy, play uh, jazz. Don't try to play something that you don't like just to impress. Play play you. Whatever you're great at it, play that and write your essay. So that's the, the, the level of audition that we don't inquire a lot of, of um, information. We don't, um, it's pretty much, we just wanted to see who you are. Now, the audition to be admitted to Berkeley as a full-time student, that's a little bit a little bit more involved. And I recommend you to, uh, let me talk about what we're going to ask you first. Yeah. We're going to ask you to uh, play a prepared piece. And that should be something that you know very well, like maybe a song that you've been playing for a long time and you prepare. And that, this, the, when you walk on that audition, the first thing you're going to do is to play that piece. And that's a chance for you to showcase uh, and show us what you're awesome about and what your passion is. That tells a lot about you right there on that piece. And every room has speakers. Usually students bring that on an iPhone or a laptop. And I, in my opinion, every teacher is different. And we have a team of teachers in different rooms. In my opinion, I really like when the students play with music. You know, some students come in with a transcription or they're just gonna improvise on the drums. That's fine, but I think you'll be much better off playing with music, you know. Uh, and this can be a studio recording song? Yeah, backup and, track. If you play something that's a pop song or something that's already out there, try to find a track without the drums. Okay. You know, back in, back in, back in track, yeah, right? sure. Right after that, we're going to see really where you at right away because we see you know, literally thousands every few years. So we don't need a lot of time. Your piece should be like three minutes, two, three minutes. Okay. And then right after that, we're going to ask for some rudiments, you know. Uh, and, and the rudiments, you don't need to play too fast or too slow. Uh, just play immediately. Like if somebody asks for a paradiddle and you just go, oh, a paradiddle, you know. Very relaxed. Okay, good. And then we move on to the. Doesn't have to be super fast, but you know we don't want to go uh, par little uh, par little. Um, uh, no, that's a flam. Hold on. You don't want to do that. But you know, if you just simply just play nice and relaxed, great. We go to the next one. And any specific BPM or whatever. Not really. Is. Not no. really. Now, if you play too slow, it's kind of suspicious, right? That you go <laughs> like. Yeah. So we go like, does he really or her? Does it? But you know, you don't need to impress. Just express. Just tell us. Just relay. If you say play a flint tap, you know, you just just nice and relaxed. And uh, on that first audition, we do not ask for uh, Swiss rudiments, innovation, chop builders. We don't ask for anything other than it from the 26 rudiments. You know, we ask for singles and doubles. Yeah. Again, you don't need to be a champion. Just doubles. You know, simple, easy, singles, 
no problem. We might ask you to put things together, part it in five strokes. Just normal, relax, right? No, no big deal. Okay. So know that. Know the 26 American rudiments. Know them like that, you know. And quicker you respond, the better it's going to be, mm-hmm. right? Then the next thing we're going to ask is for you to read a little bit of orchestral snare drumming stuff. That involves a little bit of bass rule. Simple stuff like uh, maybe something that would sound like this. Maybe something in triple field. You'll be reading that, right? Yes. Easy stuff. And we give that 15 minutes before your time. So you had a prepared piece, some rudiments, a little bit of orchestral reading, a little bit of rudimental reading. So if you do a rudimental reading, it'll be easy, like... Something in triple field. Easy stuff. Now, so... Get your pencil because it makes some notes because I'm going to give some good information here today. So for the uh, orchestral reading, you can get the Garwood Whaley, uh, you know, volume one and two. You know, he has a couple of books. Uh, For the rudiments, I recommend the NARD book, National Association of Rudimental Drummers, an old book. And also uh, the All-American Drummer, 150 Solos from Charlie Wilcoxon. And uh, I'll show you guys those books in a second so you can see the cover. Um, And um, for the rudiments, if you get the uh, John Ramsey book, The Complete Vocabulary as Taught by Alan Dawson, I mean, that's a whole Berkeley thing right there, so it has a lot of good stuff in there. Um, Okay, so you, you played your prepared piece. We asked for some rudiments. We asked for uh, orchestral snare drum reading. We asked for rudimental uh, reading. Uh, Then we're gonna ask if you know some basic styles, right? We're gonna ask you to play uh, a swing. We're gonna ask a couple of items from from the jazz items. We're gonna ask a couple of pop and rock items. We're gonna ask for a couple of Brazilian styles and a couple of Afro-Cuban styles. Not going too deep, but just to see if you can function on those things. So very basic stuff. So we're gonna say, hey, um, play us a little bit of a 4-4 swing. And most of the time what I hear, nine out of 10, or even 10 out of 10, is the student would play a, a jazz pardon with a lot of bass drum on the one, and there is no phrasing whatsoever. So it'll be something like this. One, two, three, four. Right, so what I recommend is for you to get a a good private teacher, which you're gonna talk about that in a second, how to find a a good teacher, or or a appropriate, or or a certified teacher, or a competent instructor. Uh, so investigate phrasing, right? Phrasing, a four bar phrase or eight bar phrase or a motivic, a motif thing. Or even if you know a song, let's say if you memorize a blues, like now is the time. So now you play the change ta ta da de de ta ta da in a a in ta da 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 a da in de 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 pa da a a a da un un ta ka da da in in a in a a. Actually, we're gonna recognize right away that you're playing that, by the way, even if you're not singing, because you're gonna be playing Parata Taku Pong, Pa In Shak Gain, Stalak Stalakin, Tak Stak Tak Tak Stak Tin Tak Ta Bum Baba Kunga Eh Ta Ta Da 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 Da
So in in summary then for someone auditioning for Berkeley Henrique is there any other aspect is there any um sort of just hang or communication like oral interview verbal interview Yeah right after that they go to another room and they do an interview where they ask a lot of questions Okay like uh what's your strength what is your musical strength why you want to come to Berkeley what are some of the th- what is your biggest accomplishments uh what is the what are the uh, most difficult thing that you had to go through and how you overcome that mm. uh you know what are you contributing to the music society mm. what is your goal as a musician blah 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 you know it's a lot of a lot of stuff yeah. but as far as um I, sometimes I get frustrated because come, people come to Berkeley and they don't know how to hold their sticks, right? <laughs> so learn how to hold your sticks so you're not hurting yourself, so you're not going to play a double stroke roll when you're going, you know, like that. Don't do that, right? Or, you know, or we give you a simple... I spent the other day an hour with a guy trying to read uh, two measures. Mm. And they're like this. Just with 16 notes and so get the Louis Belson text in 4-4. Know that, be, you know. Now, here's something that I want to share with you. A lot of young players, they don't want to sit on a pad and practice something like this, you know, like, let me see. Just learning one surface, hmm. right? Just, just read and read them on the pad. They don't want to do that because they get bored and they, they, no, they don't know that they need to sing that. So if I put on a board a, a groove that's like boom, 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 they can't read because they never went to that process. Mm. So sometimes with my students, I say, hey, let's look at this bar here. Let's say the measure says da, 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 da. Da 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 da. Right. So it's a four sixteens and two eight notes. Right. Yeah. I mean four eight notes. One e and so da 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 da. So even before they go on the pad, I said let's sing that. So one two three four. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Okay. Now can you play that on with the sticks? It's the easiest way to do it. Was just a stick and a pad or a snare. Now I can say, okay, if you're listening to music, if this was a funk song and this was a bass line, what, what would that be? Maybe like... Right, so if you have to play a groove and you have to make it, keep time and do a groove that's interesting and support that, what do you do? So maybe I go... See, now I'm getting the first 16 is my bass drum, the second and third 16 is on the snare. And then I have another bass drum. So that is is going to be right? Why am I playing the first eight note on the snare? Well, a funk groove, if you have a snare on two and four, it's going to sound more like a groove, right? So as close to simplicity as I can. So the things that are written around the beat two and four is going to go on my snare. The things that are around beat one and three is going to go on my bass drum. So that da 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 is going to become da 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 Oh, but you're playing stuff that's not written. Well... It might be adding notes, but the, the music is right. The audience doesn't know how good I read or what I'm reading. They're not going to say, that band was horrible, but the drummer can really read, right? <laughs> so so now I'm supporting what they're doing. That rhythm is inherent on this group. That's not the only way you could go. It depends. Now, if it was a samba, right? I can go. Yeah, 
Williams. Get that? I'm gonna play on the snare. Right? So having the ability to look at music and kind of ignore it, but know what's there and come up with rhythms that support what they're doing. It could be a jazz. Right? Why I'm playing the last notes on a bass drum and show them the right symbol. Well, because those, long, those notes are longer. They ring in more. Might be the trumpets, the trombones, so short, da, long, boom, right? You see what I'm saying? If yes. it was a heavy metal song, my double bass, right? Yeah. If it was a marching song, you know, so what I do is I get this Louis Belson text in 4-4, which is a great book, and I make them sing the whole page in different styles. Mm sing it first, play on a single line so they understand the rhythms, play the hope now. A page that is not one measure, right? It's yeah. like a bunch of measures. Right. And then we, we sing it. We sing in different styles. So it, it because what happens with my students is I go I go in the classroom and there's 12 drum sets. Let's say I have today is my first day on my chart reading class. I have my books. I walk in there. Good morning. How is everybody? Before I walk in, everybody was like, and you put a chart in front of them. Now it's like one E and uh, two E and uh, three E, and, right? So we got to break that that uh, disconnect. So what I tell them is like, hey, little Johnny, what do you like to play? I'm a heavy metal drum. Okay, play a, play a groove that you like. So you're going to be, I said, play that measure in a way that's going to fit this groove because you're not going to go, one and that two. You're not gonna do that, right? So you have to play. You have to read with the same intensity, the same orchestration. Mm -hmm.